Hi, I'm Bob Teese. I'm a former Midlothian Country Club caddy, an Evans Scholar, and the current chairman of the caddy committee at Midlothian Country Club. Midlothian has been fortunate to have a long history of a successful caddy program. In the interest of continuing that tradition and a focus on the education and training of our caddies, we put together this video. On most occasions, when you arrive at the club, you will report to the caddy shack. You should report well fed and rested. Make sure you have proper clothing, head covering, shoes, and sunscreen. Hey guys, this, my name is Mike Knights. I'm the head golf professional here at Midlothian Country Club. Uh, you're, we're standing in front of the bag room in, in the uh, golf shop. This is where you'll be coming to uh, pick up your bags and get your loops from Ron Gust, our caddy master. This is Ron Gust, the caddy master, standing in front of the bag room. Here is where you will pick up the golfer's bag. You may meet the golfer in the bag at the same time since most golfers have their bag with them during their warm-up session. When you take possession of the bag, count the clubs. The rules of golf allow 14 clubs in a bag. Advise your golfer if there are more than 14 clubs in the bag. Next, ask the golfer if he or she would like the clubs arranged in order. That is, the taller clubs in the back and the shorter clubs up front. Some golfers prefer clubs arranged in their own preference. First impressions are very important for both you and the golfer. It is important to introduce yourself with your head held high and a big smile. Speak loudly and make the golfer feel that you are happy to be there since you're going to spend the next five hours together. Soon it will be time to report to the first tee. Check your equipment. Make sure you have a wet towel. And it doesn't hurt to carry an extra pencil, some tees, and a ball marker. Most golfers will use their driver on the first tee. Remove the head cover and store it securely. You do not want to lose head covers. When you hand the driver to the golfer, ask to see the ball to be hit. It is extremely important to locate and identify the correct ball. It is a major penalty for a golfer to hit the wrong ball. After your golfer hits his tee shot, he may or may not hand the club back to you. Do not ask for the club. He will give it to you when he is ready. Follow your golfer close enough to hear him talk, but not so close that he cannot swing his arms. Sometimes your golfer may hit the ball into a water hazard. If you are in a position to see the ball, Pay attention to where it last crosses the hazard line. This is very important information for the golfer. If you are lucky, your golfer hits his ball into the fairway and it is easy to find. Hustle to the ball and determine the yardage to the green. Remember, the yardage markers are to the center of the green. Some golfers have electronic guns to determine distances. You may be asked to carry it. However, do not use the electronic gun without permission. Stand next to the ball on the proper side. It is easier for the golfer to see the clubs if the bag is held straight up. After the golfer selects a club, back up several steps and prepare to watch the ball. If your golfer hits the ball in a bunker, it is your job to assist him. He will need a club. It will not always be a sand wedge. You will need to get a rake. Leave the bag in a position that will expedite raking the bunker. It is important, especially on greenside bunkers, that your raking does not bother any of the golfers. On some occasions, you may find it necessary to rake a bunker while holding some clubs and the bag is in a different location. It is very important that the grips of the clubs are kept clean and dry. If you have to put the clubs on the ground while you rake the bunker, be sure to place the grips on the dry part of your towel and leave the rake outside the bunker. As you approach the green, it is time to think about getting the putter out. This is a busy time. If your golfer is first on the green, you are responsible for attending the flag. The green requires some planning. You want to place the golf bag on the side that you will exit the green and you may have to take the driver out if you are not going with the golfer to the next tee. 
If you are responsible for attending the flag, you have to remember a few things. Be careful where you walk to the flag. You do not want to step in the line of golfer's putts. Stand on the shadow side of the flag. Hold the flag itself so it does not blow and distract the putter. Hold the flag in the center of the hole and hold it straight up. Pull the flag when the ball has been struck. Make sure that no other golfer needs the flag before you remove it from the hole. Once again, be careful where you walk. Putting is extremely important. The golfer may want to look at the putt from several locations. It is important that you go to the golfer and retrieve the ball so that you can clean it. Do not throw the ball back. That could result in a penalty. Just hand the clean ball back to the golfer. Be aware of the other golfers that may be putting while you are cleaning the ball. Distractions on the green include moving, standing in the putter's line, making noise with clubs, and talking. The green requires more concentration than any other part of the course. Departing the green takes some foreplanning. It depends upon whether you will stay with your golfer or you will forecaddy. The same rules apply to the remaining holes. After the ninth hole, there is usually a short stop at the halfway house. It is courteous to thank your golfer for providing you with a caddy special. At some point, your golfer may tell you to stand in a different place, or keep an eye on another golfer's shot, or help another caddy. Do not take this as criticism. It does not mean that you are doing something wrong, so please, no pouting. And while we're on the subject of caddy treatment, not every golfer has a good day on the course. Bad shots can lead to a bad mood that leads to taking it out on the caddy. Grin and bear it, it's a life lesson. At the end of the round, determine where the golf bag will go. Most members keep the bag in the bag room. Guest bags will be brought to the front entrance for later pickup. Ensure that the clubs are clean and all the head covers are in place. Fill out a pay slip. Your member may sign for your pay. He may give you cash or a combination. Put your name on the caddy grade slip. And after you are paid, it is nice to thank your golfer for the loop. If the golfers are in a golf cart, most of the previous rules apply. However, things happen at a rapid pace, and for that reason you are called a runner. You can be a runner for one cart or two carts. Two carts are a challenge because you are now responsible for keeping track of four golfers and, more importantly, four balls. You will four caddy on most holes and run to mark each ball. Although you are not physically carrying a bag, you will be physically challenged running to locate balls, clean clubs, rake bunkers, clean balls, and getting into position. Also, the four caddy will be responsible for signaling if the golfer's ball goes out of bounds, stays in bounds if it's close, or goes into a hazard. These are very important signals. A good caddy is a real treat for the golfer. Golfers recognize when good caddies are in the group. We will summarize with a few do's and don'ts. Some of the don'ts include swinging your golfer's clubs, using a cell phone on the course, and using electronic yardage devices without permission. Finally, the do's include having a cheerful attitude, holding the bag in the proper position, standing still and keeping quiet at the proper times, staying a respectful distance from your golfer, and most importantly, watching the ball. And finally, enjoy your summer experience at Midlothian Country Club.